My heart is pounding. You don't hear my heart? Around uh, June 2020, I saw an article in the newspaper that said that the Auschwitz-Birkenau Memorial has been shut down for the first time since 1947 uh, because of the pandemic. When COVID started and the memorial went uh, on the lockdown, it was a devastating picture. We got five or ten percent of the visitors uh, at a normal time, and there was several months that we were completely closed. At the financial level, we were very close of a real tragedy here. Up until 2019, the memorial had an increase of five to seven percent of visitors annually, and in 2019 we had. Uh, more than 2.3 million visitors from around the world. I believe it was uh, more than 190 countries. When all of a sudden they can't come, the memorial and the Auschwitz-Birkenau Foundation were confronted with the big question, what should we do with um, Holocaust education now? And how should it look in the future? The article paralyzed me. I mean, I, it was very hard for me to even uh, imagine that this place is shut down. So I went to talk with uh, Oren and Lisa, Upsflyers funders. I shared the information and their immediate answer said, yes, of course, let's do whatever we need to do. We are part of the generation that was blessed and fortunate uh, to actually witness Holocaust survivors. So I think that we have the obligation to do something about it. In the first moment, I was not able to imagine how a startup which is active in uh, new technology and on the other hand, a foundation which uh, for the past 11 years had been active in fundraising, investing and financing the preservation of Auschwitz-Birkenau, where they both can meet. The transmission of the remembrance is something that I considered every time as a human dialogue. So I was a little bit afraid that speaking about the technological possibilities, we lose this approach. But I met people from Upslayer who, who are not speaking about, about technological issues, but exactly about dialogue between people, cultures, and generations. In this situation, I understood that we can invite the world of technologies in order to, to work together and to invent a, a new way to present the same, the same old story of the transmission of the remembrance. I think it was on a third call, Wojtek invited me to a tour for his mobile phone in, in the memorial. I was at my home under quarantine, couldn't leave the house, but I felt that I was there. Through his eyes and mobile, I was like walking together with him and I could hear his feet, you know, walking in the snow. I felt the coldness. And even though I've been there on site, I think it was one of the most powerful moments I had in my life. From here, people selected for, for gassing and for burning had to walk only a very short distance. I think it helped us understand that it is possible to transmit the experience of the tragedy over the internet. That moment I knew that we must develop a tool that will provide access to each and every person in the world that can have this experience like me. These days, if something is not digitally there, it's really easy to ignore it. So everyone needs to ask themselves, uh, can we afford living in a world that accessing something like that is not available and you need to take a flight and go to a museum? Together we are making the memorial ready for the 21st century because this is where we are right now. This is, you know, technology in the service of humanity. This is the way, you know, to, to take what we know, to take what we are expert in, in mobile and in app, and to bring an innovative solution to make the Auschwitz Memorial be accessible, you know, to the world always. We gathered here today to give an official declaration of a brave cooperation and partnership in a goal to create and develop the necessary technological tools to serve humanity and history. As a Jewish woman and the third generation to three Holocaust survivors, which were the heroes of my life, 
I'm very excited to take part in this meaningful process on our joint journey to create the necessary tools to ensure that the Holocaust history and the voice of the Auschwitz-Birkenau Memorial will be accessible at all times to all. It's a very, very important day for all of us. Uh, we really would like to, to, to offer, to present to, 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 to the entire world as soon as possible some completely new tools to connect people to the remembrance of Auschwitz, to connect the past with the present and the future, and to rebuild a, a world that will be certainly different, better, and more human. This is a great day. It's done. It's done. <laughs> you know, we've been signing here big deals, but this is the biggest project that I'm involved in. And this is a pencil that I'm going to keep. Uh, good luck to us. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. We are very proud. Stay healthy and, and thank to all of you. We are just starting. It will be a quite, quite exciting way to do together. We created the platform in a way that will be fit to everyone uh, in every age, in every place in the world. You can order the visit in any time that it's suitable to you. And you can join the guides and, and be there either by yourself or with group. Visitors will arrive at a digital waiting room where they get kind of a screen-saving uh, introduction to the tools that will be made available throughout the tour. And then when the scheduled time arrives, the tour will begin. Welcome everybody, my name is Suzanne Nayanushik and today I will be your guide in the Auschwitz Memorial. Right. The guide holds a specific device that broadcasts a live walking tour from the point of view of the guide. To the main camp of the camp, let the gate with the cynical motto above, Arbeit macht frei, work brings freedom. This gate was passed by thousands of people every morning and every evening on their way to work and when they came back from. To force those exhausted and dying people keep marching, as has created the place for the camp's orchestra. And so as the guide explains what we're seeing at the site, we have additional layers of content that are added to complement the explanation. In the camp's orchestra, there were musically gifted prisoners. The SS gave them the instruments and forced to play marches. According to rhythms of those marches, prisoners had to keep marching what was humiliating for them. But it was definitely part of the camp's terror. What technology can bring is this immersive experience to, to, to explore and to know how it looks today, but what happened there, you know, in, in a different and more in-depth way. Auschwitz for me needs nothing. Uh, it speaks for itself. It's holy grounds. It's evidence. And so everything we add is as less intrusive as possible. We can see the female victims forced to undress and being brought into one of the gas chambers. And in the other photograph, we can see this on the commander burning the corpses of, of the victims. These are the most important pieces of evidence that we have from that period. We don't want to touch anything there. We only want to tell the truth that occurred there. The first thing that we learned from the museum is that you need to feel like you are there. You need to understand that everything is real. Obviously, this is much harder than when you sit in front of a computer or a screen. The train stopped here, in this very spot. And many survivors say that, in fact, this was the last moment that they saw their relatives. So, in order to keep visitors engaged for an hour and a half uh, in front of a screen, we need to keep the tour very active, but very true to the story and to the history. Assessment who stand exactly here in the middle of, of the platform. And within a few seconds, assessment decided whether some, somebody was strong enough to work or, or not. As we can see in this photographs. People behave here really, really calm, as if they really had no idea of what was really going on here. A 
guided tour on site lasts three hours or even more. We are not expecting people to sit in front of a screen for three hours because it would be very difficult. So we need to redraw the nature of the visit so that it includes all the most important places where the symbolism is the strongest, where decisions about existence or tragic death had been made or where they they were faced with absolute cynicism. We learned a lot about the memorial and how we can take the sacred thing that they are doing on site and bring it to the online world. And all these partnerships was built on Zoom. We are relating here all the time to what they've seen before in the main camp in Auschwitz. So the idea is just to show them that they stand in the authentic place, that this is the actual place where the selections and, and the killing scene in the gas chambers happened. The guides have been so informative and they've been a, an inherent part of the development process. Those guides are speaking in more than 20 languages. It's a unique situation. You do not have any other memorial or museum in the world that are guiding in more than 20 languages. And they are trained not only in the history of Auschwitz, not only in the history of Shoah, but they are also trained concerning the culture of the people uh, that are coming. Most of them had had family members who died in extermination camps. So it's not a profession, it is a mission. Everything we're created will be managed by them, will be guided by them, will be used by them, need to be operated by them. And so the guides are the heart of this tour. When we are looking at the bags, we are able to find out about the victim's name, surname, sometimes date of birth. So probably here, Neumann, 1939. This is the first time that we, we will be able to save this human character of the, of the transmission of the, of the knowledge and combine the possibility of the new technologies. And this is something that will start a new period, let's say, in the possibility of this transmission. Auschwitz was created by people for another people. So this is the thing we have to remember. So thank you very much for this visit. The emotional component is extremely important because we're talking about Auschwitz-Birkenau. So it is a place which triggers very difficult emotions for most visitors. It was difficult for me, actually. I was not here since September. A guide is also someone who takes care of those hurt feelings. May I ask how it was for you? It was... Oh, sorry. Um, simply difficult, so sorry. We know, of course, that it is something completely different to come in person to a place like Options Birkenau uh, and to pay a visit through an internet platform. And it, was, uh, it is a, a golden rule of our cooperation that we are not trying to replace one with the other. We can never replace the, the on-site tour, never. But one of the strongest things that we understand is that through the technology and through our app and platform, the millions of people that would have never gone to a visit on-site, people with disabilities, Holocaust survivors that cannot go again. There was lots of people from around the world who will never make it because they don't have the time, they don't have the funds, they don't have the opportunity, but they're interested in the history and they should have a chance. We have to be present with our message where the people are and not only waiting that they will come to us. Here we're talking about millions that can actually visit on, on a monthly basis. We need to really make sure that it is becoming a common knowledge and not knowledge of a few. Because once it's a common knowledge, the odds that something like that will happen again decrease in a significant way. It became clear to us that this is an educational tool which can be made available to school classes. Because with a platform which allows for guided tours, we can enter any school class in, in the world which has access to internet. We will be able to reach those regions of the world when the Shoah was still not entering the schools.
So it will change the situation of the global remembrance. We are not just creating a solution, you know, right now in the pandemic when people can come and visit uh, on site. We are actually creating a sustainable tool that will enable the next generation and people from all over the world to visit the Auschwitz-Birkenau Memorial, to feel, to educate, to learn, to hear the survivor's voice, and to actually feel that you're part, that you've been there, that you visit there, that you know more. We are creating something which is unique, uh, both technologically and experience-wise. I don't think there is anything like that in the world. This is just the beginning, so that we're working on the basic tour, and then we will add more narratives and more options. On the same platform, we'll be able to carry so many different angles, so many different stories, so many different ways to cover. We are looking for partners to develop together this once-in-a-lifetime historical opportunity and together to make sure that the world will never forget and in the world we know that you know it happens and therefore it can happen again. And together with our partners, we're going to make sure that people is going to, to see it, to be part of it, to remember. We as human beings have made the experience and we know that we're capable of these horrific acts. We understand better now what is the part of our identity as humans. And, and this is something that is incredibly important to, to be transmitted to the, to the future generations. So this should serve as a warning. And that's, I think, the, the central role of places like Auschwitz-Birkenau. Be a warning voice. And I think that thanks to new technologies and our cooperation with AppSpire and Biskin, this warning voice can be made accessible. In my feeling, I didn't meet a, a company. I met some fantastic people. They are so involved, not for professional reason, but because they know that it will change something in the world. We have an obligation for us to the world and a responsibility to the world. So tell this story when, with one primary goal to do the maximum we can today to make sure that it doesn't happen in the future anywhere, ever, and that's hard.